All right, we're going to be watching Mini Million, who's going to be playing Ramatra on Blizzard World. This is Gold 2 on PC. I want to improve on tank, but I struggle figuring out how. Like the title says, I'm looking for advice to help me improve. Common wisdom is you should review your own games, but on tank especially, I struggle to find things I could practically improve on. At most, I spot instances of bad tunnel vision every now and then, but those probably aren't the only thing holding me back, which is why I'm asking for help in spotting other mistakes and ways to improve. I used to be constantly on the cusp of breaking into Diamond, that's my overall goal, but after a break in the rank reset, I dropped down to Gold, so I would be very thankful for any advice to help me improve. Especially on Ramatra, which is usually my go-to, though I also play Queen, Ryan, Zarya, and Tune them. That's a lot of heroes. I'd love advice relevant for other tanks too, but at the moment this is the only potentially useful save game I have, thank you for the help. Okay, so this is a relatively short game, and a few things kind of, I remember watching, a few things kind of come out. Number one, right, core gameplay loop, I talk about this all the time in Ramatra, right? You use staff until you need to use shield, then you use shield, right, then you keep using your staff, then after the shield expires, you pop Nemesis form, go punch, 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 block if you need to, and then you get your staff back and then you and you repeat, right? That's the core game loop for Ramatra, you do that over and over and over again. An extremely common problem for Ramatras, especially below Diamond, is that they are too quick to go into Nemesis form. Like, way too quick to go into Nemesis form. So, your staff actually does a ton of damage. It does 120 damage a second compared to 100 for pummels, but your staff can headshot, so it can do up to, up to 240 damage per second. You can also damage people at any range with the staff, versus pummel you can only damage people at close range. So, you should try to use your staff more whenever possible. So, for example, if you want to break a shield, shooting with the staff is actually faster. Now, obviously, pummels go through the shield, but sometimes your damage pummeling somebody through the shield isn't going to make a difference. Like, if you're punching a Ryan, it doesn't actually do anything. Like, they can easily get healed through that versus breaking the shield, which could be valuable. I'm not saying always use staff against shield by any means. I'm just noting, as a general rule, I try to reserve Nemesis form for when I'm like, okay, now is the time. Like, I'm very conscious about the exact moment I pop a Nemesis, right? That's why probably one of the biggest distinguishing factors between better Ramatras and worse Ramatras is when they choose to Nemesis. Because if you Nemesis at the wrong time, you're not going to die for it, but you're not going to do anything. And you're going to feel that right away. You're like, wow, I don't really feel like this fight's progressing at all. Versus if you staff more, eventually the enemy team probably has to try to kill you, and then you force out Nemesis form, which is great, because then they've committed to try to use resources. Anyway, so that's the first thing. Game poor game blue. Number two, I think every single one of your ultimates is useless this game. Um, I might have missed one when I was skipping through, but I can't remember a single ultimate where I'm like, oh, that was a really good ultimate. You got good value out of it. You can't be whiffing ultimates as tanks. <laughs> um, I, I'd say DPS is sort of the only care, only role that can reasonably whiff ultimates and still win a game. Tracer's a good example of this, right? You could get the, trace, the diamond on Tracer and literally never stick a pulse bomb right? Like, the whole time, because you just can carry so well. Widow's another great example, right? Who cares about your Widow ultimate? If you're popping off, it doesn't matter. Hanzo's another good example, right? You don't actually need to hit your ultimate to be able to do stuff on a lot of DPS characters, because your core baseline value is so high. Supports and tanks have to land ultimates. Every ult you pop, you should expect to win a fight that was uncertain, or you would have lost otherwise with your ultimate. So we'll talk to the ulties, too. That's number two. And number three, it does not feel like you know how to play Blizzard World. Um, especially the second point is very problematic. Your core issue is that you simply don't take the high ground on offense or defense, and it ends up being a very uh, soft defense as a result and a very poor offense um, simultaneously, just because you don't really take high ground and it becomes a huge problem for you. Um, if I remember at the end, I will also link my Blizzard World guide because I think that will be helpful for you. Anyway, 7-4 here. So we're poking a little bit. So what am I thinking right now? I think, okay, so they have a Ryan here. The Ryan's gonna try to hold close, which is a bad idea for him, but that's good for us. So we're gonna go up here, I'm gonna reload, and I'm just gonna spam out the people on the top, right? And when the people at the top, because staff is dangerous, right? Like they can't just sit here and be like, oh, whatever. Oh, fourth thing I mentioned, your aim is kind of a problem. And we're gonna see that a few times where your aim is a big problem. It's ultimately a pretty uh, significant ceiling limiter for you in the long run. Like you'll never get the masters with your current aim. Like, I think even getting the low diamond is going to be tough, um, especially with the rank reset, where I think it's harder than ever to climb to diamond plus because the top, the players above diamond all got compressed down to diamond, so if they haven't climbed back out of it yet, it's going to be an issue for you. Anyway, if somebody's standing here, right, and you're shooting at them from, from the joke, like, it's a problem. Like, I'm going to force out lamp, I'm going to force out region burst, or I'm going to force the Baptiste to take cover. Like they, they can't just stand here. There's no cover up here. So ultimately, the Baptiste has to either go all the way to the left, or they have to back the back in, or he has to use abilities, all of which are good for me, 
versus the Rhine, like nothing's gonna happen here if I shoot the Rhine, right? If I shoot the Rhine staff, it doesn't do anything. If I pummel him, uh, maybe a force him to back up, and the Baptiste can basically outheal the damage, right? The Ana could easily outheal this as well. That's not gonna get anything. So what I wanna do is I just go in here with staff, right? I poke, 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 right? The Baptiste or the Venture, right? Or even the Ana if I get an angle. And then eventually this Rhine's gonna be like, hmm, I'm gonna try to stop the Ramatra. So then he comes after me, and then I can kite him, right? With Nemesis form at that point in time, once he starts committing on me, and then the Rhine's gonna be exposed. Because for example, Let's draw this out, right? So we'll use blue for friendlies. So if you're standing over here, their enemy Rhine, right? I'll do RE, right? He's gonna he's gonna move over here to try to chase you down. And now you'll notice that your team can shoot him in the back. So that's what you're looking for. So when I look at the situation, I think I'm perfectly safe here. Even in staff form, I can just walk in here to the left and there's nothing they can do about this. They literally cannot kill me. I don't care if every single one of these players were like GM level, there's nothing they can do to kill me in this situation. And so recognizing that, hey, look, I'm safe. This ride is a distraction. Using your staff to go after the back line to force them back, that's how you win this fight. Just by coming through, right? Poke, 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 and then adapt to what they give you at that point. So let's see what you end up doing, right? Oh yeah, vortexes, your vortexes are terrible. <laughs> They're like so bad. So you throw vortexes, so vortex does very little damage. Um, it used to be 15 damage a second. Now I think it's been upgraded to what, like 30 or 40 damage a second, but it still does very little damage. And against tanks, it does almost basically zero. I would think of it as zero damage against tanks. Like it's not a meaningful amount of damage. It's gonna that's gonna change the outcome of a fight. But the slow is really important. And the fact that it pulls people to the ground depending on how high they are, right? Pharaoh's is notorious an echo for being able to fly over it. But the fact that it slows is really valuable. So this situation, think about it. If you're the Rhine, you get vortexed. Do, do you feel like you're in danger as the Rhine? Like if you get hit by this vortex right now, are you like, oh God, I'm in vortex. Are you like, okay, I can A, just stand, like get behind cover easily. B, I can just hold the shield. So there's no situation here where the Rhine is in danger. Versus if you threw the vortex over here, that's a huge problem. Because remember, your team has a Widow and an Ash. If you slow these two heroes up here, all of a sudden they can get headshotted and they probably drop or take cover. That's a good example of using your abilities to get more value. Throwing vortexes at tanks is rarely a good idea. But the one exception I can think of off the top of my head is, or two exceptions. Number one, throwing at Winston when he's trying to jump out. Number two, throwing at Junker Queen when she shouts. Those are the two examples I can think of where it is a good idea to vortex them, but generally speaking, do not vortex tanks. It gives you almost nothing. Right. See, notice this vortex got give you nothing. Like literally, the Ryan's still full health right now. Like this literally does nothing. So, watch again right here. So, what are we thinking? Okay, we're we're done with we're done with all the staff ammo. So it's good that you fire all the ammo. But what is going to happen here if you pop Nemesis? You start punching the Ryan. But is the Ryan going to die? He's at full health right now, and he's got two supports that can keep him alive. This is not necessarily going to do anything, right? I look at this Ryan as he's perfectly safe. I just you reload my staff and just keep spamming high ground and I shift to the left. The Ryan has to do something. He can't just let you keep moving forward and force the force the arm back, force his backline back, because then you'll ultimately isolate him. Because your kind of goal here is I can't necessarily kill the Ryan directly, but if I just keep going this way, it's going to force I switched colors here. Um, it's going to force them backwards from your staff pressure. And at that point, the Rhine and the Venture are isolated, and then your team comes up and then kills them, right? And then you wrap around and kill them as well. That's the idea here, right? This is when we think about space control. It's all about this, right? Cut off angles so they can't help the Rhine. The Rhine is strong right now. You cannot kill the Rhine, but you're gonna try anyway, right? But you see, like, the Rhine, like, isn't even losing health. You just punched him, what, like, four times? He's missing, what, 64 health? It, it like, it doesn't do anything right now. Right? Going for the venture actually is a good idea. So pulling the right in, okay, fine. Right? But the critical thing here is that your widow actually kills the echo, right? That's actually the big moment here. Now, should your widow have killed the echo? Well, I mean the echo's being pretty silly here to try to aggress this high, this visible in this situation, right? I don't think you did anything to really open that up. And I think if you went to the left, it would have been even easier to get that pick. But sometimes your teammates make plays, right? I don't think you deserve that kill. I don't think you did anything that led to that echo kill. But again, sometimes you get free kills. Another vortex where you're just, you're just clearly panicking because you thought the Rhine was going to push you and you waste the vortex. Versus throwing the vortex right now, the Baptiste would be huge, right? Or even venture to force out Burrow. But 
Um, ideally, you hold it for after burrow. So that was actually a really good tip I saw recently. So when she starts the channel, sorry, stop saying she, they, when they start the channel, throw vortex here, and then you'll pull them straight to the ground. Like they won't be able to pop up, which will prevent them from um, like just the extra altitude. So they'll have, they'll be they'll be stuck right here, and you can kill them very quickly. So aim is obviously a problem, but you only miss like any one there, so we'll let it go. So Vortex is unclear what you're aiming at. I think that's way too deep, but you have to stop Vortexing the tank. <laughs> As a reminder, like Vortexing the tank is not gonna do anything, but I think you're gonna try to go for the Baptiste right now. But let's think for a second. So they're already down one, right? Because the Venture is dead, the Junkrat's in the back. Right? and the supports are in the back. So I'm already in a 5v4 situation. Trying to run the back line here is quite dangerous because I'm gonna be walking into three heroes who could all see me. Actually, I'm just gonna stick with red for friendly. Maybe I should just do that from now on is just stick with the team colors, so it's less confusing. So you're gonna walk over here, right? But notice that in this situation, all three of them are gonna be able to shoot you at different angles and some of them are completely safe. So for example, the Junkrat here is unkillable. The Baptiste could jump up the high, jump up the high ground and also be unkillable. The Ana is potentially killable, but you can't even see her right now. So you're just trying to chase down the Baptiste. And now you're gonna run an issue where it's like, oh look, they have cooldowns and I just can't kill anybody. And then you get pinned. To be fair, the pin is not what's gonna kill you. You'll notice you're 117 health and you haven't even hit the wall yet, right? Like this is definitely gonna get you killed. And this is something that you have to recognize is, look, sometimes it's actually not safe to go after the high ground. I could just keep pummeling the Rhine here and just burn him down because he actually doesn't have good LOS other than the Baptiste. And my whole team is able to shoot the Rhine. So the Rhine can't swing at me here without potentially dying. My Widow has the opportunity to kill people in the back line. I think it's a lot safer to just fight the Rhine there. And I know it's hard because you get advice often to go after the back line, go after the back line, go after the back line, which is great. But there's a caveat, which is go after the back line only if you don't die. <laughs> Right? If you go over the back line here and die for it, this is basically a one fight, right? This is like a 5v4 situation. Your Ash ends up dying, but only after you've already committed. This is a 5v4 situation. This should have been like a, a 75, 80% one fight. I would say in the positioning, I would say there's like a 95% chance I win this fight. Like even against similar, similarly skilled opponents, there's very little they can do at this point in time. But walking forwards here and getting caught out is a throw. Again, all you have to do this is like a time where just, just fight the ride because we already have an advantage. I don't need to do anything. Rotating to the left is gonna to take too long. I just wanna constantly apply pressure to the ride, give my Widow and Ash time to get kills. You see, like look at the position right now. You see how strong this is? They can't support the, the ride, right? Nobody can stand here and try to save the ride in this situation because you have two snipers aiming at them. If you just play slow here and work the ride down, you win this. Also a Vortex here on the back line on the Ana or the Baptiste would be huge. Jumping forwards. So, why are we vortexing? Even if the Ryan is low, like health, he's still got basically a full health shield here. He's not gonna die. This Ryan does not have 221 health. This Ryan has 1500 health when you factor in the shield. He is not gonna die here unless there's a support who can't see him, right? The honor should presumably see him soon, but, right? Like, it, don't, don't waste the vortexes. <laughs> very, very important, do not waste the vortexes. Okay, so we're pushing up here. Attack, 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 right? So, the Ryan has made a mistake because he's been too far forward, Bastion's broken his shield. So, when he shatters, very important, do not stack with your team. This is a good tip for all tanks, which is there are ultimates that tanks cannot dodge because tanks are very large targets and sometimes they are very immobile targets. So, as Junker Queen, right, or Ramatra, or Sigma, or whatever, like if you're gonna get shattered or grabbed, just let it happen. But the most important thing is don't get your team sucked into it. So you'll see here is at the moment where you start going at him, you're gonna walk to the right instead of to the left. So the reaction here is you go left, not right. That way he shatters, he either turns and shatters you, or he shatters your team. If he shatters me, so be it. There's nothing I can do to prevent that at this point in time, but it's fine because we very well might win this anyway. The only way we lose this is if we all get shattered, but you stack in with everybody else, Bastion gets killed, window gets popped, and now you're gonna die. Right? These are like basic, like Overwatch 101 type stuff for, for tanks, which is, look, I don't try to stay to the right here, I swing to the left, because even before, I mean, first of all, I should know he just shattered because rides get shattered every other fight. Right, and this is now two minutes into the game, he for sure has shattered now. 
A. B is I don't want to stack with my team if at all possible, right? I want to spread out, create more angles. It's harder for Orion to deal with people over here and people over here than just people over here. So split sideways as a general rule, right? Like don't think like, oh, I have to physically body block all the damage to my team. It's not your job. That's not the way tanks are designed in Overwatch. You should try to mitigate the damage that you take while also applying near maximum pressure. So I think this is also another fight that probably could have been won here if you hadn't gotten killed there. Or I'd say get shattered with your team. Because if the if the Bastion dies there, but you don't get shattered, you kill the Ryan, walk forward, you pop Annihilation, you win the fight. So, you hear this right now. You can see the Ryan, right? We just saw the shield. You can see and hear the Ryan. As soon as you hear this, I pop Nemesis form. Because I'm low enough that I can die instantly, right? Charge does what, 275-ish, right? Plus, plus Hammer Swing. Uh, plus Fire Strike, plus any damage I take from them, I can die like nearly instantly to this, right? 96, 107, right? He really should have popped Fire Strike there and just killed you instantly. It's very lucky you're not dead right now. But Coalescence has popped to save you, which is a good job by your supports, because you really should have died for this. Ryan's dead, yeah, keep on forwards. You need to keep an eye on your health. 750, 690, 680, 680. walk forward. 613 health. You're so healthy right now, and Coalescence is active. Walk forwards. I wonder if you actually play other roles, like support, for example, because I feel there's some degree of timidity to you. Like, you don't really know when you should go or not go. And I think that's pretty typical that I see from other roles who try to play tank, is that they're just like a little less comfortable with like the pacing of it. You do a good job killing Tyre here, great. All right, go after the Junkrat. I would just run at him. Like, literally, I would just run straight at him. There's no real way that the Junkrat can win this fight against you, even including your team. Like, you just run at the Junkrat. He'll pick with the Mega, then you put Shield down, and then Bubble Dance the Shield, and then you'll kill him. There's no, like, mathematical way for the Junkrat to kill you. And that's really important on tanks, is be able to know how to win, like, execute 1v1s successfully, right? A lot of people think of that as a DPS skill, but as tank, it is important. You just have a much larger margin for error than DPS do. Okay, so we come in here. What's the read? Well, we got a Baptiste shooting at, uh, what is this, our Moira, right? Our, this, there's so many different skins now, it's like harder for me to keep track. So Baptiste is shooting at our Moira, and we're coming in behind the Baptiste. Why did we throw the shield down? It wasn't for our Moira, it's not far enough, and it's not for us because no one's shooting at us. So you don't want to be wasting abilities like this unnecessarily, right? So you can shoot the Baptiste, all right? Good, right? So Ventures here, right? They're shooting uh, whatever the ability's called the shatter analog, but you want to get to the right, right? Get to the side of the venture so that you don't get hit it as well. So you see how you walk back in front here, and now you stack on top of the rest of your team. Now, it's not going to make a difference in this fight, but I'm demonstrating the bad habits that you have, okay? Because the difference between you and a better player are bad habits. You really need to cut out things where it's like, oh, look, they're using a, a line attack splash ability. Let me stack with the rest of my team. You want to move to the side. Same thing for like coalescence, right? If this was a Moira coalescing your team, you want to walk into the line of fire. You want to walk out of the line of fire. That way they have to choose to hit your team or you, not you and your team. Okay, maybe we'll go through the rest of this a little faster. So, Blizzard World second. Most important thing about Blizzard World is that we have to take high ground. You are never going to be able to cap this point without taking high ground. So the general idea here is you either go, this color's going to be difficult to see. You either go this way, right? Or you go down and you go up this way. And there's like an option where you can also wrap this way, okay? But the most common one path is path number one. Path number two is viable. Path number three is like, a, yeah, sometimes in some situations if they're really locking down one and two, it's, it's, it's a thing. Because what you're going to see is that most enemy heroes are gonna be stacked here, applying long range pressure to your team. If you are standing on low ground, what the heck are you going to do about this? Nothing. You're just going to get shot to death. And this is kind of the issue here, is we're here, right? The Baptiste is going to apply pressure, but like, what can I really do here? Not a whole lot. Right? He's really far away. Now you've lost your Ash, and now you're walking around, and you're doing nothing. Right? Versus, you could have used that time previously to go and take high ground. Instead of going to the right right now, you could have gone to the left and preemptively taken this high ground, forced the Baptiste back with Staff plus Shield, right? and taken this high ground away from them. But 
But now, what's gonna happen? Okay, you're gonna try to push high ground, but there's like, they're all stacked here. This is obviously like not gonna work. Against Junkrat, you cannot take this choke, which is fine, you got, you got options here. So you can push the card this way and then go and take this side because now they free this up. If I get to this position, this is strong. So that is an option for you right now. Venture's clearly out of position. Prime charges in. So this is the end. This is the enemy team making mistakes. There's no reason for them to be leaving high ground here. But like the enemy team also doesn't know how to play the map well. So they're they're going to make mistakes. Like literally the Ryan should just stand up here and be totally fine. Him walking down, you can see the, how bad a position this is for the Ryan, right? You got four enemies all surrounding him on all sides. This is going to result in him dying or should if you continue applying pressure. Again, another vortex that does nothing, another shield that does nothing. So if you're gonna do this, first of all, don't vortex, I'm not doing anything. But you see the Baptiste drop, Throw the shield between the Baptiste and the Rhine, and that way the Baptiste can't heal. Then get to the left of the Rhine, vortex the bath, and go up and kill him. That's the correct usage of abilities here. But there's no reason to be playing slow right now. Your team, I think, is up two. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and there's only three heroes here. Your team is up two heroes right now. Push aggressively. You need to understand when do I push, when do I like slow it down. This is a moment where you want to speed it up because it's a five on three situation. Just walk up and kill the Baptiste. What can the Baptiste do, right? If you're the Baptiste here, how do you survive against five heroes when you're standing in the open? And what, he's already used Lamp even. This is an easy kill by you, right? Literally just be like, oh, I'm just gonna run the Baptiste and kill him. Like, I don't have to worry about anything here. If the Ryan charges me, okay, fine, I pop Nemesis, right? But it's, I mean, he's not gonna kill me in the next four seconds anyway. So I can pop Annihilation here if I absolutely have to, but like, there's basically no reason for that. Now, kill the Baptiste with the rest of your staff. You still have 58 ammo. All right, so you try to hit the Bap. I would just keep aggressing here. Like, there's no reason to stop. Like, you're basically full health right now. Ryan's dead, just keep aggressing, right? I would have vortexed him right there and killed both of them. I don't even need, I don't even need Annihilation here. I just kill both of them. Like, it, it, it's so hard to deal with a Ramatra in this situation. Like, imagine right now, you vortexed both of them. How would they stop you? Like, purple or not, like, they can't kill you here fast enough. I would even pop Annihilation here if I absolutely had to, but I'm pretty sure you don't even need it and you can just kill them straight up with the punches. And now you just let them get away. Like, this timidity is, is like, effectively costing you the game because now both supports live instead of both being dead. If they're both dead, then this fight goes very differently. So I would keep aggressing right now because the, the Ryan is not here, right? That's another shield that does nothing. See? Like, who, who is this shield for? No one is shooting at you. No one can even see you. The Venture's not even looking at you, right? So this is a bad shield. I wouldn't have popped Nemesis there. This is a good example of what I mean by you not executing the core gameplay loop. Don't pop Nemesis until you know Nemesis is gonna get you value. Venture has two different escapes. So I don't pop Nemesis until I know that I can use Nemesis to hunt them down. Without seeing the Venture use their escape abilities, I don't bother popping Nemesis. I just use his staff. And this is why staff is so strong. Staff allows me to force out enemy abilities and commits nothing. No cooldowns. All it uses is ammo, which is relatively cheap, right? In terms of value, I can reload that easily and I have lots of ammo on my staff. I can just shoot them with the staff and then they're gonna end up like running away. This exact outcome plays out the same way even if I don't use Nemesis. But now I don't have Nemesis available. So this is unfortunate because if I need Nemesis for anything, I don't have it. So I would toggle this off a lot earlier. Like uh, this is questionable if this is actually gonna do anything. <laughs> but you're very lucky nobody went to the left to help out the, the venture. But also nobody contests the point. So fortunately you're gonna get away with this. Right? But again, bad habits, right? The whole point of coaching is to eliminate bad habits. Sometimes you get will get away with bad habits because you're not in a rank where you're expected to play at a very high level. But if you do play at a high level, you will climb out extremely quickly. Um, just a note, object permanence. <laughs> Like, if, if you see a Baptiste here charging boots, first of all, you can throw Vortex, right? This is an easy Vortex kill, which makes, it, makes like, it, it pulls him to the ground, right? Binds him to the ground, and then you're, you're, you're good. But if he jumps, where is the Baptiste? Is he over here? Is he over here? No, he's, he's, he's right up here. You just saw him jump. Just, just literally just look up, right? Just look up and punch and kill him. But he jumps, and you, it's like you have no idea where he went. And I know it seems like ridiculous, but this is kind of thing where you need to develop like better, 
target tracking here. Not even from an aim perspective, but like, where did they go? There's not a lot going on right now. You're not being flooded with information. You're just straight up losing track of the fact that the Baptiste jumped in the air over your head. And then suddenly you're like, oh, I guess he must have teleported away. And then you go after the venture here instead of just being like, oh, wait, yeah, just kill the Baptiste. All right. They're just going to kill themselves here for some reason, but that's great. All right. Things are going fine. So we still haven't seen a single annihilation from you, but I don't think you needed it, needed it. But. I will note here on your way in is how does the Rhine get, oh my God. <laughs> okay, well, this is ridiculous. So would I have known this is, this is gonna happen? Not necessarily exactly. I would have noticed that the Rhine was missing though because it's been a really long time since the last time I saw him. And so if I don't see, it's, it's similar to the same concept of Sombra. If I haven't seen the Sombra in a while, I assume the Sombra is about to kill someone in my backline. Right? That's like the same general deal. People don't stand around and do nothing in Overwatch. They must have some kind of goal. So yeah, the Rhine is doing something ridiculous here, but if I'm standing out here and I still don't see the Rhine, I turn around and I walk back to the cart and I try to figure out what the heck is going on. Because if the Rhine doesn't challenge, we win anyway. The cart's gonna move forward no matter what. So that's why all I have to do is figure out where is the Rhine. By this point, I would have walked backwards and tried to figure out where the Rhine is. And then seen the Rhine here, and then I would pop Nemesis right there. Because I'm surprised, right? I'm like, whatever is about to happen is clearly going to be bad. But that's fine, right? It's honestly big. Grand scheme of things, not a big deal. Very unusual situation. I would just suicide here. But it's fine. If you want to live, it's, as long as you get away with it, it's fine. All right. So we're going to poke here. Yep. Don't walk into fire strikes. So I would just walk forward to the right. My job is not to push into this room, okay? I already got two heroes here. Let them take care of it. Just push here. Start taking space. Start getting towards the cart. So I think you actually saw the Baptiste to the right. Yeah. So right here, you see the Baptiste. So I'm thinking, okay, eventually I'm going to push to the right and try to kill the Baptiste. Because the Baptiste stays there, which is in a very unusual spot. They're out of position. They have no ability to escape here easily unless they run all the way to the backside of the point. Because the only way the Baptiste lives here is the Baptiste spends the next 20 seconds running back here and looping all the way back around, which is unlikely. So I'm walking up here thinking, okay, can I go for the Baptiste right now? Poking the Ana is fine. Get towards the bat, right? And start working the bat down, right? Just use staff. Use staff, use vortex, whatever. Go after the staff. Do not do this. <laughs> this is uh, this is quite the commitment on the on Ana the here. There is no real reason for the Ana to die right now. I think the bat could easily save here with grenades or lamp. The Ana could just take cover sooner, but I think you're very lucky to get away with this. But now you're purple, you're way in the back line and you're super, super low. And now you have to pop alienation just to try to stay alive, and then you're going to die. So a huge part of playing tank is understanding who is vulnerable and who is not. Like, yeah, maybe I can kill the Ana with the staff here, right? But like, if I'm not going to get it, I'm not going to get it. Chasing into multiple heroes on all sides of you is a very bad idea. We've talked about this like multiple times this game, both from your perspective and the enemy tank's perspective, when you're like, oh yeah, the enemy tank has made a mistake because he's surrounded by enemy heroes. This is the same situation here. You are surrounded by enemy heroes, and even as a tank, you can die really easily here, even with Annihilation. I think if you were going to do this, when you got over here, you should have immediately held block, right? And then turn towards them, Ate as much damage as you can, then pop the annihilation and continued holding block. But realistically, I think especially with tire coming down, I think there's no reason to, to try to be popping annihilation here. I think all in all, I think this is a bad idea, right? The Ana here looks like vulnerable, but the most vulnerable hero is the Baptiste. Because I can chase down the Baptiste here, right? Go into this room and take cover if I need to, right? Pop annihilation here if I have to, hold block, any number of options. But running into the whole team, you have no options now to survive. So pushing up, so Ryan's screening you, obviously not a lot you can do about the far room. I think it's good that you're trying to vortex and staff, right? Rebirth. So I see this, I just back out. Like, what am I gonna do, right? You see, like, this is not, I just lost two heroes. I'm not gonna win this fight. You just need to get out. Don't hold block here. You need to run. Yeah, you're, could, you could have been killed there. So aim issue, right? Reaper's running in a straight line. Just, you gotta keep it at head level. But you see that it's like a little over his head. You can see the projectiles right now are just a little bit over his head. You could have done massive damage here to the Reaper if your aim was just a little bit better. But again, right here, we're shooting, 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 shooting. 
why do we pop Nemesis here? I know you think, hey, the Reaper was low. Like, let's imagine he didn't Wraith for here. But A, we know he's going to Wraith. He, there's no reason he'd be fighting here if he doesn't have Wraith. B, I can still kill him with a Staff. You're doing a perfectly good job with your Staff even before Nemesis. Staff actually does more damage than Pummel. <laughs> I, like, it's so hard to, like, teach people that in Ramatra because, like, Pummel seems like a big, strong ability, but it's actually a very low damage attack. So... It's very, very hard to coach people into understanding that Staff is actually more dangerous against many heroes, certainly any large hitbox heroes like Tanks and Reaper, than it is the Pummels, right? Just continue using the Staff here. Now you pop Nemesis, and now what are you gonna do with Nemesis? Nothing, see, that immediate cancel, like you pop Nemesis and you're like, oh, that was a mistake. And now I don't have Nemesis for the next six seconds. Is it devastating right now? It's not devastating, but it's obviously preventing you from walking forwards because you're scared because you don't have Nemesis. But you need to walk forwards now. You only have 56 seconds. You gotta get up and take the corner. Right? You have to start working the Ryan's resources down. Ryan has what, like 700-ish health? Yeah, 700 health plus 1400 shield. He has 2100 effective health, not including the armor bonus. So my goal is work that health down every second of the fight, right? Well, if I don't have anything else to do, work down the health, his actual health, his shield health, whatever he's got. That way, when we are committed to the fight, he is as low as possible. Because if the Ryan still has a 1400 health shield, he can just completely stop his team from dying and himself from dying at pretty much any time. The only attack your team has to penetrate that is your punnel. So you need to be working that down sooner rather than later. Right? You should have been doing this five, six seconds ago. And that makes a difference, right? Five seconds of staff damage is 600 damage. Right? You're not going to miss a shield. So you got to keep working that stuff. Uh, I don't think the shield does anything. So I feel like you're like, oh, I'm in, I'm sort of in danger. But like, you can't even get to the cart right now. I would shield a lot closer, otherwise they walk through it. General rule for shields as Ramatra, I co the way I coach this is, if you put the shield and the enemy team walks through it, it was too far forwards. If you put the shield and you walked through it, then it was too close to you. You're looking for the sweet spot as to where is the right spot for shield. Now, this comes from game experience, right? A lot of game experience. But the right spot for a shield is right here. Why? It's too far for them to walk through it, for example, to shatter. And it's, it's not too close to me that I can still walk up. And after the shield expires, I can then move to the cart as my next area of cover, right? This shield is no good because you can see the ride immediately walks through it and just shatters your team. Okay. Now we just get shredded. Right, EMP goes off, but like you've lost too many, right, and then you die. But like, that's like such a small thing, right? If your shield is in the right spot, you never get shattered, right? And maybe the Rhine doesn't even try to do this because the Rhine's like, oh, I can definitely get away with this. But if your shield is here, like the Rhine literally can't shatter. Like if it's right here, he cannot shatter. Little, little differences in abilities are what distinguishes better players from worse players, okay? Like something to keep in mind is at GM, I'm not, you know, the bullets coming out of my gun don't do twice as much damage as yours. You know, I don't have twice as much health. I don't have lower cooldowns. I just use what I have, the actual tools that I do have. I use them better. That's the difference. All right, we're pushing up here. So I think, okay, I have Nemesis coming up or uh, Annihilation coming up soon, but I would start with, I don't think I want to pop Nemesis right now. So 18 seconds, this is the last fight. So. I want my full gameplay loop because I want all the value, right? Use staff against the backline. Use shield, buy more time, reload the staff. I don't have to worry about shatter, so like that's not a problem right now. I can use shield freely. I can play near the Rhine freely. I don't have to worry about that whatsoever. The Rhine's not gonna pin me from this position. So just keep working the backline down. Then after you're like, okay, now I need to pop Nemesis, then use Nemesis, apply pressure. Then they use all their cooldowns against you, right? Then you hold block. Then you pop Annihilation and you run them over and you win. I talked about this so many times, but like Ramatra is so hard to deal with if you correctly execute his gameplay loop, especially if you have Annihilation. Because the best part of Annihilation is not the fact that it's a 30 damage a second to everyone around you. The best part of Annihilation is that it gives you Nemesis form again with another 225 armor. It's very, very hard to deal with people who effectively just suddenly have 300 more health and the ability to block. And block quadruples your effective health because it reduces damage by 75%. So yeah, the 225 armor, which is roughly 300 health, the, the 300 health that 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 uh, Annihilation gives you effectively turns into 1,200 health if you hold block. And if they decide not to attack you, then you can attack them. So it's a massive amount of space that's generated by stuff like this. But again, you don't have Nemesis right now. 
right? You start pushing them back. I that was so close to knocking you off the edge. So, right here, I got shield coming up. And I got vortex. I want to shield off the back line. I want to vortex the bap or the ana. Then I want to run at them with a the staff. Then when they commit to try to kill me, I pop annihilation. But is that what's happening? No, you're you're backing off here. But like you had the moment. This is your moment to go and try to actually kill somebody. Because what can they do now? The Ryan doesn't have pin, right? Because he just pinned a few seconds ago. So you got some time here. Shield off the back line. Go after the go after the bat. Go after the Ana, right? Try to force them all to turn on you. Then you pop annihilation. I would just hold block. Yep, one hundred percent. Just hold block here. So I think you pop annihilation here because because you, you just get scared. But this is like, if I'm going to take damage from the Rhine, I want the damage from the Rhine to be when I'm attacking the backline already to get the blow. But like, all right, let's back this up. What is my actual value here? Ana heals for like 93 health a second, right? Baptiste heals for like, assuming he's hitting the grenades, I don't know, like 75-ish, 70-ish, right? That's like 160 health per second that's coming into this Rhine. My pummel is not doing anything meaningful, right? They've also already thrown grenade and everything. Like, just go after the backline here. Yeah, see? Now, this, this annihilation is getting you nothing. All you're doing is attacking a target that everyone's healing easily. All right, Reaper's here. You try to go after the Reaper, which I think was okay. All right, obviously, you get Shadow here, nothing you do about that. And then you're going to die. So, all in all, I think it's just a very inefficient use of resources. Okay, so let's watch defense. So, we're poking a little bit, it's fine. Right, that thing's super exciting. I don't think the Vortex is so valuable here, but it's okay. I think Vortex in the Rhine when he charges is actually really big. Like if you Vortex here, prevents the Rhine from killing anybody with charge, and it means that the Rhine can't escape. But you go after the Rhine. I don't think you should go after the Rhine here. I think you should actually zone the back line. I think you should go immediately go to the left and go after Lucio. Right, the Rhine is too tanky. Your team will either kill him or not. This, I think that you missed an opportunity here to go after the back line. So this shield is not doing anything. Good vortex though, I like this. Yeah, go after the Baptiste. So we can see the issues with aim right now is you just can't keep the cross here at head level. Like left, right, okay. But you see like this is this is way off, this is way off again. Right now we're over his head. Like this is this is pretty rough. Like your actually drops below like 30%-ish. It's a problem because you could easily kill the Baptiste by now. Good boot by the Lucio. All right. So, miss, 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 miss. Like this, this stuff kills you, right? One, two, three, four, five. Being 0 for 5 here at point blank Velucio is gonna cost you games. No way to sugarcoat it, that's a problem. I don't know what the vortex is for. Okay, so your soldier's gonna die here, um, and you could have seen, what the heck? Uh, you hear the Lucio, you like 100% hear the Lucio here. This is the easiest kill of your life. What the heck? You gotta kill Lucio. You heard him jumping and everything. This is like tunnel visioning right now. Lucio finally dies. No problem, if he wants to pin me here, it's no issue, he's gonna die. Yeah, just keep working him down. Uh, this Ryan's made a mistake. <laughs> Way too deep. Uh, I don't think you need to throw the Vortex. I mean, you definitely don't need, to, don't need to throw the shield. Don't throw shield. Uh, something else I coach. As tank, don't think I need to mitigate 100% of the damage coming at me. I only need to mitigate damage that's relevant. If I am full health here, right now, like, I don't need to throw shield at 441 with nobody visible except for Lucio. Like, this is, this is terrible value here. Right? It literally gives you zero value in the situation. But even if they did peek you, it's okay. You could take a rocket there. You could take a rocket and a couple shots on Lucio. It's no big deal. Right? Just just eat it. It's fine. You got your supports with you. The, the tank's already dead. There's no reason to be using cooldowns here unnecessarily. That piece is way out of position. Yeah, I just run out and kill him. That's fine. All right. Uh, again, where is the BAP? Just kill the BAP? <laughs> Oh man, yeah, you have you have a lot of trouble with people who jump over your head. Another shield that does nothing. You don't need the shield; it's fine. Okay. So 
let's think for a second. Farah just died, so we're in a five on four situation. Ideally, we push in, we wipe everybody, we burn another 30 seconds off the clock. Why are we backing up right now? Why are we backing up? Why are we still backing up? Our soldiers are in front of us and clearly moving forwards. Why are we backing up? Why are we backing up? Why am I still backing up? Your tank, right? Your team got a pick. You have an opportunity here, play up. Like if there are five people on the enemy team and they're all pushing up, yeah, play back here, this is a good spot. But they're one down, just push up here, right? Push up, apply pressure, try to catch the Rhino, right? Vortex behind them if he tries to escape, just kill him, right? Kill him, kill the Echo, kill anybody, right? Soldiers pushing here, why are we backing up? Our soldier is braver than we are, despite the fact that we have three times his health and like 10 times the amount of damage mitigation options, <laughs> like infinitely more damage mitigation options. Why are we not pushed up here with the soldier? We're no, th we're no danger of dying here. Not against this lineup, right? If they had like a Roadhog Bastion, yeah, different story. But in this situation, how could we die? Like literally, if you replaced every single hero here with the best hero, best player in the world at their position, our level, literally how could we die here? <laughs> Worst case scenario, you pop Nemesis, you just hold block. And there's no way you can die. But like this, for like this, this timidity, right? This is a problem. Right? Soldier gets caught out, takes a ton of damage, and he dies. And the second that soldier dies, you're going to lose this fight. Right? doesn't have to be that way, but it certainly could be that way. If I lose a teammate when I could have saved them by simply applying more pressure and being focused instead of the soldier, or whoever the teammate was, I always feel bad. I always feel like that's my mistake. That's my bad. That's the whole point of tank is to take space, draw attention so your DPS can make plays. I don't know what, exactly what your soldier was thinking there. Maybe he was thinking to kill the Echo, right? Maybe he just wanted to force the Rhino. I don't know. But I do know is that you are wasting your time doing nothing when you could have been doing something. Now the shield does nothing. Rhino goes in. Thankfully, the Rhino is terrible. Uh, so Lucio's here. Why did we pop Annihilation right now? We still have six seconds left on Nemesis. There's only a Lucio over here. Why are we popping Annihilation? Right? He bumps us. Why are we popping Annihilation? Is it to kill Lucio? Because Lucio can outrun us very easily. So, like, the Lucio can easily escape this. See? Like, you gotta think ahead a little bit as to, like, what is my goal with this ultimate? If my goal is to kill somebody, I need to be close enough to actually kill them. Don't pop Annihilation when you don't need it. Like, I can understand if you need to run at them for something, but you even still had Nemesis form for six seconds when you pop this. Right? You don't need to pop Annihilation right now. Just run at them with Nemesis. Right? Try to kill the Ramatra, try to kill the background, whatever you want to do. Just try to do anything before you pop Annihilation here. But now you run at them, and now we see truly how little damage Annihilation does. Like, you, you see how the Baptiste, like, literally doesn't care about Annihilation. It does 30 damage a second. That is less than meleeing somebody. <laughs> so, don't, don't think that Annihilation is going to, that the damage for Annihilation is all that significant. Okay, that's one of the, the, the most straightforward tips I can give you is don't pop Annihilation because the damage is going to help you. Pop Annihilation because you need another Nemesis and you need 300 more health. Like, I think Annihilation is so good that even if it didn't have the damage, like, debuff, if it literally was just another Nemesis form, it'd already be very strong. Like, that could legitimately just be an ultimate in and of itself, just giving you another life effectively right this is why same thing for diva bomb and echo copy it's like diva bomb at high ranks never kills anybody right but the fact that you get a second life when people were focusing you down is massive same deal for for nemesis form or oh, annihilation right again see lucio just gets away from easily it's not even hard it's not mechanically difficult to get away as lucio it's like super easy don't shield off of lucio echo dies that's great right oh good aim on lucio right so Baptiste is here. So what are we trying to do here? Well, we're going to need to try to stay alive, which is going to be fairly difficult in this situation. Uh, you probably are not keeping track of who's alive and who's dead. Uh, I think I would know right now is that both teams were low, and I don't think I would have a support. But I need to try to kill the Baptiste quickly, but the problem is the Ryan's charging. So honestly, you're going to be pretty screwed either way. I think your only option is to get behind the box. I think I do one attack, and I jump backwards onto the box, onto the other side to prevent getting charged to death. But staying here is pretty crazy. But if I'm going to Vortex, Vortex the middle of the window. Because he's definitely going to use the window in some way. That's, see that Vortex is off target? You would have killed him, you just put the Vortex at his feet. Right? This is just like basic ability usage. You just need to be able to make that read. Just throw it at him. You just throw it at his feet, he, he dies to the Vortex alone. Which maybe gives your team a chance. Probably not, but maybe gives your team a chance. Alright, we'll walk out of spawn. 
What's my goal here? Not to go this way. <laughs> just go up high ground, take high ground. Because worst case scenario, if you need to drop, just drop. But you can't go from low ground to high ground easily. All right, out here poking. So now we see, okay, Luce has taken high ground and the Ryan is flanking as well. And I can't do anything about that because I'm out of position. You see, like you, you, you probably feel right now, you're like, oh wow, something bad's about to happen. And I can't do anything because I'm way too far forwards. If I'm playing high ground, I would heard slash seen the flank and then I'd be able to help out with this. But now two are dead, which means this is not gonna work. Like you see the two kills up here, just back off. You can't do anything right now. This is a this is a three on five situation. Yeah. So the shield is not gonna do a whole lot. Obviously, that's like for the Pharah, but like what the heck is that gonna do? Ryan's on top of you, and then you're gonna probably die here in a second. You should hold block. You should definitely hold block. Oh, why don't you hold block? <laughs> As a reminder, block reduces damage by 75%. So right now, instead of having 60 health, you have 320 health. And once the Mercy starts healing you, it quadruples her healing. So she's healing you for 220 health per second if you just hold block, effective health a second, right? Holding block here is massive, right? And maybe you bait the Rhine forwards, maybe your team comes out, maybe they kill the Rhine and you live, right? I think you probably live here if you just hold block. You need to use block more, right? And now the Rhine just holds shield and now Rhine gets to live and, you know, pretty unfortunate. The good news is nobody was pushing the cart. So all of this is ultimately for naught, but once again, we come out. I don't go this way. I know my team's here. It doesn't matter. I still go high ground because worst case scenario, I can drop to my team if I need to, but I want to be able to hold off that top choke. Vortex does nothing. Uh, for the record, my punches have 10 meters of range. Ryan swing does like, it goes like three meters, maybe three, four meters. Why am I trading hits with the Ryan when I can stay out of range infinitely? I think I have a... One of the resources I'm going to link is a, is a game where I play Ramacha versus Reinhardt. I think you should watch that to understand how easy it is to manipulate a Rhyn and win the matchup very, very easily, right? But this, where you're trading swings when you have a long range, medium range attack, and he has a short range attack, is a great example of how not to do this, you know? And I make this analogy in other reviews, which is, if I have a gun and someone has a knife, why would I walk up to them and start shooting them with the gun? I would just stay... I don't know, a hundred meters away and shoot them with a gun and force them to run at me before they can finally stab me. And it seems so obvious, and yet I see people do this all the time on Ramatra, on Sigma, right? On all of these other heroes where it's like, hey, the enemy hero only has the ability to attack me at very close range. Why would you intentionally choose to get closer to them? So all you're doing here is allowing him to get damage and value off of you and farm ulti. And his ulti is way better than your ultimate. Shatter is an easy fight winner, especially at low ranks, right? Where people don't end up uh, like like tracking Shatter and understanding to LOS it. All right, so the Rhine has died now. But the problem is what, you lose one here? So let's think for a second. Once again, the soldier's in front of me, right? If the soldier's in front of me, just play up, right? Just play the gate here. If you're, if you're not gonna take high ground, play gate. I think you have to play gate here. Just go up and take the gate, right? Prevent them from getting through the choke. But sitting in the back means that your Baptiste ends up dying, right? What does he die to? Oh, a flanking bat? Yeah, I think you also heard this. You could run in your kill the bat too. But I think you should shield off right now. <laughs> so you hear, so out of my left ear, so I have I've volume down 50% for the review, but you can hear vol like shots coming from your left ear right now. So you know that the Baptiste is here shooting. And then when the Mercy reses, shield off right now for her and then get your support back. But, like, think about it. Your actions led to three heroes dying, right? You could have heard the Baptiste in the left room and saved him. You could have been playing up to prevent your soldier from dying, and you could have shielded off from your Mercy. You single-handedly allowed three heroes to die next to you, all of whom you had tools and abilities to save their lives, which makes this fight now unwinnable. So yeah, I would just back way the heck up here. You saw the rhyme uh, uh, to the right. I think it's like pretty quick, but I think you see the rhyme to your right. Yeah, you see him right here. Yeah, from here, I, I'm dead. So what I would actually do here, I would nemesis and run this way and try to get out that way because there's no way I'm gonna survive in this room. 
Uh, fun fact, another thing that you could do here to potentially try to stay alive, hold block and just sit in the corner and see if your team is able to come help. This is a great situation where if, if you had an ant on your team and they narrow you, you can actually flip this by popping Annihilation. But punching here was 100% not the play. And as a result, you don't really even get a good fight on second because of this. So none of this is going to do anything, right? We're just backing up here. So tires popped. So I would back up here, right? We've already we already lost two. I mean, this is pretty rough. I don't know if you're gonna get another fight. Yeah, I think this is pretty tricky. I think I think you have to fight this because ideally you want to reset here. But if you can't reset, I think that because the cart you don't have enough time. I don't give enough time. I think you have to fight this. So tire comes. No more priority is tire, but you can't do anything about it. So so be it. Ryan goes in. I kill the kill Lucio right now. I pop Nemesis. Kill Lucio. Pop Nemesis, kill Lucio. This, this is the moment where you must kill that Lucio right away. I do not pop Annihilation quite yet. Because I don't need Annihilation. Annihilation's not going to do anything for me right now. <laughs> like, yeah, it says 30 damage a second to the bat, but that's fine. I don't need to worry about it. I can kill Lucio without Annihilation. <laughs> Sorry. So, go after Lucio, kill the Lucio, right? Then, if you need Annihilation, pop it then. But Lucio dies. Okay, great. We also waste the beat out of this. Right? Kill the, kill the bat. All right, here's the junk. By the way, at any moment in time, I could pop Annihilation later. So you'll notice that when you popped Annihilation, how much health did you have? I think you were basically it. All right. So you were at like 680, right? So you only got, what, like 60 health out of that instead of getting 225 armor. So imagine that instead of being at 133 right now, you have an extra 140 armor. That's a big deal, right? That means maybe you survive a little bit longer and maybe can do something else. Ultimately, probably not in this situation, but it will give you a chance versus no chance at this health. Yeah. Yeah, this is done. I'm gonna do this anyway. Yeah, and you can't contest from here. Okay. So, we can hold there. Thoughts. As I mentioned at the beginning, gameplay loop, right? Try to get more value out of your staff. In fact, <laughs> I would I follow up by the saying, try to get more value out of all of your abilities. Staff, vortex, shield, very consistently, you're getting minimal value out of those abilities, right? And that's a huge difference in the impact that you can have on a game. That's number one. Number two, your ultimates are a problem, right? They really don't get you a ton of value or you pop them way too early is, is another issue. Number three, as I mentioned before, understand how to play the map and be in the right position and then number four would be just a general grab bag of like awareness right like that back piece in the left room killing your whole team was pretty rough right that lucio who was just jumping around right next to you at low health that you don't seem to be aware of that's also a problem right not clumping with your team for aoe ultimates when you hear the ultimate and then you still walk into the path i think these are all just like random assortments of like things that you need to clean up on the way on okay uh i'm gonna stop there hopefully this was helpful